and fellowships, including at the Vermont Studio Center, Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, Weir Farm National Historic Site, and Helicar Lahoten Foundation, if I'm saying that correctly, good. Uh, she currently teaches studio arts at Hudson University, and she's here today to talk to us about her fantastic and lovely show. Um, I'd be particularly interested as I think you already know in the uh, memory paintings versus the other paintings and sort of the different uh, different processes involved. So for that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks everyone for coming today. Um, I'm gonna hang on to my sketchbook and can you my a good level? I'm a teacher, so I can teach. I can talk really loud or not. <laughs> um, so so first of all, I want to thank Greenhut Galleries, all of you. Um, for your support and encouragement. I find a lot of um, energy and enthusiasm about my paintings from all of you guys. And I come and I see them up and I see your work, a lot of you on Facebook, and it sort of keeps me going. So my, my trusty critique buddies are here. I mean, it's just really exciting. I have students and friends from um, near and far. So thank you, everyone. And I'm just so thrilled to be here to be sharing this work. Um, also to be hanging um, with Matt Blackwell, who's not here today, but I have this idea that his figures come into my paintings at night, but, you know, and I told him about it, and he was like, yeah, I think they might, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just thrilled to be um, hanging on a wall next to him, because I think that our work has this really interesting conversation. Um, uh, and I think there are qualities, narrative, um, and surface and drawing and all of this that happens in that work that sort of brings out those same qualities in my work. So I'm always hoping that people catch that, like that these paintings aren't just about being um, on location and, and they're about stories and they're about um, drawing and they're about color and design issues really. So um, I'm going to follow my notes because I can get sidetracked really easily. Um, but I did bring some things in to share with you guys, and I think I'll just do my talk, and then um, I will open it up for questions about specific paintings or, or anything that you guys want to discuss. So I, let's see, normally I have a, a whole PowerPoint. Like I said, I'm an I'm a, a, so assistant professor at a Husson, so I teach, and I've just come off of my teaching year. So this is a very fast lecture that I put together. <laughs> but um, th there are four main points that I want to talk about to start. And those are um, really about, and if you, like maybe if you've read my statement or the wonderful write-up that um, they wrote about my work, you already have a sense of what I'm doing. But really my paintings, um, I think, are about painting place. They're about looking. They're about myself and um, sort of my own narrative, uh, which then sometimes becomes other people's. And then I think they're also just about playing with paint, about formal elements and um, color issues and problems that I set up for myself. So when I think about painting place, so um, all of these, for the most part, I would say at this point in, in my painting path that 85% of the work starts on location. 
and so I'm out there dragging these guys um, into the location, and that's what I post on Facebook because I think it, it's awesome. Um, you know, and so I bring them out and I start, and depending on the scale of the painting, uh, it may go out quite a few times, right? So pretty much I paint in three to four hour sessions, so some of them um, take much longer than that. And then they come into my studio uh, where they live with me for probably far too long, and I, I sort of noodle away at them and look at them. Um, but they are basically, um, so bec because of that, they, so they are actually real spaces. Um, and some of them, most of them are real spaces. And there are a few sort of outliers in this show that are 100% from memory. So like these two, and John was just talking about, um, are completely invented. So something that I'm playing with um, in my work currently, and it, it's sort of what is bringing this work together. So place, um, is important to me. Uh, some time ago, I realized, so I went to all of these residencies, actually five. The last one was in Normandy. It was a good one. And I painted all of these other spaces and, and the light, the quality of the air, the, you know, all of it is so different in Virginia, for example, than it is here. And so I started to realize that, um, that I am actually painting something very specific when I'm painting in Maine. Um, but also, I would paint these other places all over the country and I would bring them home and my family would tell me things like, oh, that reminds me of your grandmother's house <laughs> or this, oh, that's your mom's house, right? Or like my neighbors. And I, so I realized that I was picking subjects that are already kind of like in my mind, right? That I'm drawn to certain things. And so I have this idea that if I grew up in Brooklyn, that I would be painting something completely different, right? Because there'd be visual cues in this landscape that reminded me of that. And so that's the so that's where the place comes into importance on a on the first level. So um, secondly, I'm also like I'm a daydreamer and a looker, and I spend a lot of time just kind of getting lost looking at spaces and different places. And I'm interested in the idea that I can, like today I drove down to Portland and the light and the air and the apple blossoms on, um, on Marginal or Franklin Arterial um, reminded me of like, oh, I graduated here like a long time ago. But, but so anyway, the light is different and I'm sensitive to that and the smell in the air. And so place is important to me in that way too. And I'm interested in the, idea that I could make paintings that make you think about all of those sensations, about not only just color and, and um, light or in particular moments in time maybe, um, which none of these are because they get painted over and over and over again and then eventually in my studio, um, but also like the texture and the, like the thickness of the air and like the fog, like in this one, I was like, how do you make fog, you know, it's sort of like, so I'm hoping at like a, the bottom level that these paintings kind of evoke some of those senses of place, right? And that's what I look for in my subjects. So I walk around, I do a lot of walking also, and I, I um, pick places that kind of remind me of things. I mean, sometimes I just paint, right? And just put those that out. But a lot of the times I am really, really specific about the places that I pick. And, um, this particular body of work that's hanging is really an investigation, um, mostly of Great Cranberry Island, where I have a half-life, I like to say, although my half-life is in Portland right now, <laughs> so I'm weekending here. Um, no, um, but, so, but I painted there, and I went there for that residency because it reminded me of my family's homestead in Nova Scotia. So, there was a long path and a lot of diversions, um, but the body of work that you see here, the ones that are from um, Great Cranberry are places that make me think about like these walks I took with my Nana, which is like very sweet. And, and like this is a beach that um, actually my, my late cousin and I spent a time like one day 
in high school walking around and just picking up trash, <laughs> you know. And it was funny, you know, I have like these very, I have like dreams about this place, right? And, and actually this one I, I have a draw here with you. Um, but I, so the last summer, or let, no, Christmas, I got my brother and my father a little ornament of these birds that are only, on, you know, piping plovers. They're like these special birds, right? And I, my dad was beyond himself, right? Because he remembers them. My brother was like, I don't really know who you're talking about. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I remember these like little specific things, right? Um, and I think because I've always been a looker. So that's the second part, that um, the paintings are really about looking. And I have this sort of mantra, personal mantra, of, like take a closer look, right? And I take photographs and I, I, mean, I don't actually work from them, but I pick spots that I can look at for a really long time. And I'm hoping that in a painting like, like this, that you become the active looker as well, right? So that you can't, that you're following, your eyes are traveling um, just as much as mine did when I was making it. And so I pick these spaces that are like beyond complicated because I can sit and look at them and find all of these intricacies for hours and hours and hours, and then they become this giant problem, <laughs> and I have to figure out um, how to basically, you know, get them to work compositionally in color, and that is generally, I think, what happens in the studio. So um, it all started the landscape, and um, you know, when I left the USM, which was 15 years ago, I was really actually painting close-ups of nature, um, and I have a whole series of nests. Um, that kind of came out of that. But I, I got into the landscape mostly because I was thinking about um, just being in a world that was bigger than myself. But when I look at this work, I think that that's sort of ironic because, and if you read my statement, that the work is actually, it's a little self-centered <laughs> in a way, like it's really about myself. So, um, and it's about me in these spaces. So um, I think you'll also notice that there are no figures in any of them. And that's a, that's a decision that I've made um, pretty early on. I realized that when I put a person in the paintings, it was about them and what they're doing in the painting. And so um, I'm more interested in, in you getting lost in this world and, and you know, initially me getting lost in, in this world. And so, so a lot of them, like I, I wanted them to pull out some of these guys um, because they really are about this sort of perspective and like you, you're, you're an active participant in those paintings. And um, it's not always the case. I think, uh, you know, something like this is maybe a little more generalized. You could be anywhere. That's obviously in the distance. But, um, you know, there are several this, that, like you know where you are as a, as a viewer in terms of your point of view. So, of course, um, I see, you know, there are painters in the room. I love seeing my painter friends because they understand this piece the most. Um, that really, at the core, like, I want to play with paint, right? And so, and, you know, so they're scratched and, you know, I, I actually really like to, I don't suggest that you do it, but I really like to touch them. <laughs> and, and maybe in some world I'm a sculptor, I actually really like to play with clay too. Um, but there, I think every po problem is a, every painting is a problem, right, to solve, and I certainly set myself up with these viewpoints that are problems to figure out and to navigate. Um, but I also think every painting has a different answer. And so, like, the texture and the mark, and it, like, something like this um, is chosen, frozen. It's obviously a play on words. Um, Great River Island, freezing <laughs> in a boathouse, <laughs> wearing, like, heated socks. And, <laughs> and actually, I got this really cool painting, like, for boat painting, cover all the wear. Um, but I had a puffy jacket underneath it and I was freezing and I would go in and then like hang out by this heater by my husband's desk, like warm up, and then go out. But somehow it just felt like the paint, the paint felt like that, you know, like the way that the cold chills you to the bone, like it's part of you. And so, so like that seemed like the right answer to that, that like you can like feel that chill when you look at it. Um, and then, you know, there's also just the idea of like playing with abstraction, right? So, so I am interested like in getting close and getting 
I'm like the person that they ask at the museum, like to step back over and over again. I'm that person, and my hands are all through these things. So, so that statement was so beautiful that was written about the work because it really is a physical act for me. And I had an experience actually painting in France with um, Elizabeth Hoy, and I was watching her paint, and she, it was like the most beautiful thing, right? She was like conducting. I was like, oh my God, I wonder. You know, like, you know, it's interesting to paint with other people because you're stuck in your own world, right? It's really a self, a selfish endeavor, in a way. And I watched her paint, and it was like she was just like running a symphony with her brushstrokes, and she works with very um, thin paint. And I, in contrast, I was over on the other side of this garden, and like I had this three-foot painting that it was like on the ground, like digging into. <laughs> and I just thought, oh my God, I must like a crazy woman <laughs> when I'm out there. But that is, I mean, that piece of it really consumes me, and I'm interested in those abstract qualities, I'm interested in mark making, I, mean, I, make, I do a lot of print making also, so in the paintings, often, I know there's two back there that are of trees, that one of them I started, and I um, took a newspaper and pulled all of the paint off and printed it onto the second one, and I actually do that quite a lot. Um, just to kind of like scumble up the surface and then moves like this or like that's like often my fingers um, so but it's not just about having thick paint it's about having thick and thin paint you know so that you can kind of um, go all the way back into a space but then all of a sudden there's like a pole or something that puts you back in the front of a picture plane so um, and that's what I, you know, that's what I teach also, right? So, so um, I don't know who it was at the opening, but said that this looked like a cat scratch. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's actually kind of similar to what happened when I made it. It was like a, kind of like an obsessive, like, movement. And, and that happens quite a lot, actually, in the work. Um, people often ask me if I paint with a palette knife. Uh, and that, I do a little, but I it's like a, a very small part of it. And in fact, if I catch myself only using the knife for a while, I'll put it down and I'll pick up a brush or I'll just, like these are fingerprints, I think, I'm pretty sure. And I was thinking, and like I loved how Jasper Johns always had his hands in the, in the work. So, um, so I've talked a little bit about the process. Um, I also um, draw all of the time. So. I brought in two sketchbooks and one's on the table and I'll lay them out there, but um, these are some of the drawings that promoted this series and the, the piece in the, in the front window is actually a memory of a fishing weir um, from the Bay of Bundy. So I went to Nova Scotia in 2012 um, and I did just drawings um, and watercolors really, but, and I made this one drawing and um, it, I'll tell the story a little bit later, but it came back in the form of the painting. So I pretty much, I teach a lot, so I draw a lot. <laughs> this is, you know, during my, there are times in my semester that are pretty busy, but something like this is not something that I would go and just make a painting directly of, but I'm basically drawn to look. So this is a garden, and actually behind Kelly back right there, you guys can see it after, I went back and painted the same, the same garden, but it's like, it's a different painting. So, but this one is a good one, I think. I was going to flag all these. So this particular drawing is this dock, which is that dock, which is that dock and that dock. So it's all, right, I made this one last summer, and I've actually been kind of hovering around this dock because it's almost falling apart, and I just keep painting in and around it because it's, a, it's a problem, it's a difficult thing to paint, and B, it reminds me of my grandpa. <laughs> so, um, so I draw all the time, and I think I'm... This is the... So it actually, there it says, like, South Side, Beach Walk, Daniel's Head, Lighthouse View, Piping Plover, right? And so I have these little notes, and then um, years later, and, and this is the story I'll tell next, I made this painting and this idea of this place where I spent a lot of time as a kid. So I'm gonna just 
hand that around, and you guys are welcome to look through it, but it seems like it's too much for me to hold. So the last part I'll talk about, and then I'll open up to questions, um, is really this painting and sort of this story. And I think that this story actually really happens and starts um, somewhere in like the 80s and 90s when I went up to Nova Scotia for every single summer of my, my childhood. And we painted um, my grandmother's house two sides of it every year. And it was, <laughs> you know, right? And, <laughs> right, because it was like on the coast, you could see the ocean. Um, there was this really great Cape house. I wish I actually had a chance to paint it um, before. So it, I, I revisited it, as I said, this space in 2013. And already I was making um, these paintings actually of my hometown. Um, so, you know, painting is not linear. I, I want a bumper sticker that says drawing is not linear, because I think that would be great. But, but, you know, there's like all these tangents, and they all like feed into each other in, in different moments. But I was painting in my backyard. I started thinking about place, as I mentioned at the start of the talk, and I went to my family's homestead, right? And my niece gave me this fantastic tour, she was eight at the time, of like where the fairies lived and my backyard, right? The, in the house that I grew up in. And I was like, oh my God, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like that is the best hiding speak, you know? Like that's our yield sign. So I actually went to my house and I painted all of these views. And this particular one was like my view looking up at my bedroom window. I also painted my, um, my mother's views. I, I just lost her. At, sometime before that, and so I went and sat in the spots that she sat in and painted her views, and I painted my sister's views, and like all of these places that our family sort of hung out. Um, and that, I, I visited, and then I took off and went to Nova Scotia and did this great kayaking trip, actually. And it planted this seed that started this body of work. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't quite so, like I said, it's not so linear. I, I, in between, so I went to Nova Scotia, I had a residency in Virginia, I got rained out um, of the landscape, I painted out every window I could find, and then I was just stuck in the studio with, my, <laughs> with myself and, um, and my memories, of, and I kept thinking, well, residencies are really for playing and trying new things, so I, so I actually had all of these small panels, uh, and I had just come off of this trip, and I bought this color is a gambling color, radiant green. And I picked it up and I was like, that is a Nova Scotia color, right? Like, like we used to call houses in my family, like Nova Scotia houses when we saw that color, right? Because a lot of them are painted with boat paint, which is still true on Cranberry Island, because um, it holds up to the weather a little bit longer. So I was at this residency thinking about these paintings, or thinking about Nova Scotia, I was with a bunch of poets and writers, and I just started inventing these these little landscapes. And this like, one, I think, I kept this one like at my house because it's sort of the seed of the whole idea. But um, I would go through my pictures that I took, like new to digital camera, like 2,000 pictures or something crazy, um, and I would shut the computer and then just paint. Right? And so that's where this came out of, that's where the south side one um, came out of, and it's also where the one um, that's in the window. So it's a complete memory. Um, and there were a lot of them that did not work at all, <laughs> and I would never show them to anyone. In fact, I painted over some of them. And um, at, the t at that time, basically, you know, you sit and you have like a great dinner with all of these people, um, and people, they were writers, so they just started giving me people. So um, they were like, oh, well, you have to read these Elizabeth Bishop poems. And like, oh, this is a Mary Oliver poem. Oh, this is so and so. And so I, I took those, and someone brought me a book, actually, and I would read this poetry. And then I would look at all my photos of Nova Scotia, read, you know, several poems, and then close the book and just paint. And so I didn't know really what they were at that time, and like this one that's in my hand, this one I kept around, and it actually took until now, which is 
you know, five years later, pretty, like, um, I, I say rigorous, but like, like I have a pretty steady painting schedule. I'm making a lot of work. So it just seems like they finally met up to each other and that this work and form that work. So Great Cranberry Island came into play because I, I hit a wall and I just started making like the same painting. And I didn't know, like it just felt like they were really contrived. I'm like trying to make these memory paintings, but it was being really literal. Um, and I realized that like part of the issue is that I didn't know the color <laughs> and the light of this place. So I wrote to go to the Helleker Lahoten Foundation which is a residency on Great Cranberry Island, with a work plan that basically talked about how I was stuck and that I didn't know what color fog was. And um, <laughs> it's sort of a green. Um, it's different on different days. There's no, there's no answer to that question, by the way. Um, there's this really great boat builder that was out there told me the best way to paint fog would be to paint this whole thing and just spray paint it gray. I didn't do that. So, um, but I also just said I wanted this experience. I wanted to live on an island and be around people um, in this maritime climate that was similar to my grandparents, right? So I needed to go and just be absorbed in that world for me to understand and then paint that world. And, you know, there's a whole other tangent that includes a love story that I'm not going to share with you <laughs> today, but I met my husband there. Um, and I painted this painting during that residency, and this one is, um, it's actually in Carl Little's book, but um, it, I, I went to the boat yard because I, that was where we went in um, Nova Scotia, we, we would go to this boat yard and then we would go and like look at all the lobster traps and then we would go to that beach. And so I set up camp in this boat yard um, and then soon after got invited in for coffee hour and became part of like the crew and people would come and they'd be like, oh, who are you? And they'd be like, oh, she's a painter. And they like, thought I was painting boats. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, and like, I'm painting, I am painting boats, kind of. <laughs> but, and then they, they were great. They just gave me these really good critiques. But I found all of these narratives and these stories kind of within that world. So, um, and this per particular painting, I started it and it did not have that, the ramp, which I know was called a ramp. Um, in it, it was like this beautiful dirt path, and this thing rolled up, and I was just, I went up to them, like, how long is that going to be there? <laughs> just started this painting. <laughs> they were like, oh, probably like two weeks. I was <laughs> like, oh, uh, you know, and, and so I actually like had my, this is where they keep the masts, and I had this painting like leaning on this mast, and then this thing rolls up, but it was actually what, how I got to meet everybody, because they came out and they were working on this boat, and Dick Avery, who's just a sweet soul, like every hour you'd be like, the problem with this boat is that a farmer built this boat. <laughs> That's, you know, but anyway, I learned all of these things about the boat yard and what was happening and, and sort of these stories. And um, I was, I brought my grandfather's hat. I wanted to like fit in. He sold lobsters in Gloucester. Um, that was his big career. And so, I was like, hey, I'm one of you guys, and, and, and so I've just been painting there, but I've been picking spots that kind of really go back to, um, to those personal narratives for me, right? And then I think and I hope that uh, some of them are very clearly like, okay, this reminds me of such and such, and some of them are, are maybe newer, right? And just this idea, like, like I painted this really about looking, about this idea of being on an island, but looking at islands, and, and um, I made the whole thing, it was it was the end of March, this is a, a poem actually, um, most of the titles are poems, uh, <laughs> but but then it snowed, and I was like, oh man, it's the end of, like, it's never going to stop, right? This one, um, my husband doesn't love as much, because it, it actually he was here at the opening, and it's just like, I want to love all these paintings, but they remind me of the things I need to fix. <laughs> and, and so this is his office, but but this one was really like lost in a fog. Like it was, I made a series of these paintings that were just about fog, um, and then this one, which you guys will have to get up after to see. I, it's about um, so so we bought the boat yard in January actually, and then that bomb cyclone happened <laughs> and took out the dock the same day, right? 
So we're on the mainland and thinking like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and so, so I painted the destruction of the like the missing dog. And actually now it's so this was there and now it's not there. And now it's there again. So so now I'm basically running around this boatyard trying to paint things before they get restored because I like the way that they they look in their sort of dilapidated sense. Um, and then I'm also just painting things that I see. So the trees that I've talked about before. Just kind of setting up problems for myself. Like that's my view actually in my home in Ellsworth. Um, but it remind I had to do a lot of walking in the woods. I did a lot of walking in the woods when I was little. And um, I just wanted to see if it was possible to, to make a painting and then do one completely from memory. So I'm still playing um, with those those two worlds. Um, Bishop, okay, there we go. Um, oh, I read Shipping News, We Keep a Light uh, by Evelyn Richardson. It's a great book. It's about a woman who has a lighthouse um, outside of Clark's Harbor, Cape Sable Island, that's where my family is from in Nova Scotia. Um, so I just tried to really kind of absorb myself um, in a literary way also into this world and, and paint. Um, and then, yeah, and then, you know, I'm hoping, my plan is to go actually back up this summer. To the, at the end of the summer, I'll go and I'll see my family's homestead. I was able to visit it a little, a few years ago actually, after my nana's passing. And I'm really actually hoping that I can learn like stories about my family through these places, right? And my dad has some of them, and, um, and I bet if I brought him, he'd go. But there's the Smith Museum. All of, all of my Smiths are on Cape Sable Island, and there are a lot of them up there. <laughs> but um, there's actually an island off of the island called the Hawk, and, and there's a lighthouse there that my great uncle Benny was the keeper of. So you can go out, and I've hiked on this island and taken pictures and all of that, and I actually did some watercolors. Um, but I'd like to go out there and paint and just be like, what would it be like to have his life for, for a day? So um, that's kind of, that's pretty much what I prepared. Um, I'm happy.